Many Soviet achievements and inventions were far ahead of their time and beyond the reach of other advanced countries. This was especially true for peaceful nuclear power. Soviet scientists designed a mobile nuclear power plant, NPP, Pamir 630D, which, first of all, was to work in the vast expanses of the far north. It was a unique unit. But before I get to the video, I want to recommend you my new channel Visioner Crime, where I tell about interesting and criminal stories and mysterious disappearances, shocking crimes in the USA and Europe. I am sure you will not be bored. Follow the link that appeared in the upper right corner. Also, the link to the channel I have placed in the description to this video. So, let's continue. A Brief History of Mobile Nuclear Power Plants in the USSR Around the 1950s, the idea of designing mobile nuclear power plants was persistently circulated and discussed. Nuclear reactors were already being installed on nuclear-powered vehicles, for example, as well as on submarines. Maybe it makes sense to install them on land vehicles as well, to be able to move them around on land? When a group of scientists suggested installing nuclear power plants on chassis, Yefim Slavsky, Minister of Medium Machine Building, enthusiastically supported their idea. This is not surprising, because a transportable nuclear power plant would allow the Soviet Union to fully provide extremely cheap electricity to all residents of the most remote regions of the far north. Every year we had to deliver a huge amount of fuel, millions of tons, for the settlements that were located in the Arctic. Therefore, the idea of creating a mobile nuclear power plant also made very practical sense. It is worth noting that the first attempts to develop a mobile nuclear power plant were intensively pursued already in the 1950s and 60s. The Obninsk Institute of Physics and Power Engineering put into operation a prototype of a mobile nuclear power plant, TPP-3. It was mounted on the chassis of the Soviet T-10 heavy tank, which was powered by a 750-horsepower diesel engine. The size of the nuclear power plant was so large that not one but four chassis were needed to move it. The resulting complex weighed over 300 tons. The entire plant could move unhurriedly to its destination, but to make it work, it had to be permanently installed and all its modules rigidly connected with pipes and wires. This process, of course, was not quick and required some preparation. In general, the TPP-3 was quite successful in operation, but it was never put into mass production. It was used by the military to provide electricity to facilities that were located far from populated areas. A new stage in the development of mobile nuclear power plants. Literally in two decades in the Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic, namely at the Institute of Nuclear Power Engineering of the Academy of Sciences, the development of a new mobile nuclear power plant, which was named Pamir 630D, began. The main work on it was carried out in 1976 to 1985. In the first half of the 1980s, the first two prototypes were ready, which at the time were the only nuclear power plants of this type in the world. Pamir 630D was a set of two semi-trailers capable of carrying multi-ton cargo. There was no ready-made chassis for the plant, so we had to develop a new powerful tractor MAZ-7960. In addition to the chassis, it was necessary to design a completely new nuclear reactor, unlike all previous models. If the TPP-3 used a water-water reactor, the Pamir 630D uses a reactor based on nitrogen tetraoxide. This substance has a high thermal conductivity and heat capacity, as well as density, due to which the nuclear reactor was made single-circuit and, consequently, more compact. Nitrogen tetraoxide was characterized by a serious problem, very high corrosiveness, which could lead to a breakdown of the turbine generator circuit. Inhalation of even a small dose of the substance was fatal for humans. Scientists worked hard to make the operation of the mobile nuclear power plant safer. The core was made of a particularly strong material with a huge margin of safety, a large volume of liquid coolant provided reliable cooling, and the reactor was controlled by a computer program. In essence, it was the world's first autonomous nuclear reactor, and eventually, despite some shortcomings, two sets of nuclear reactors were made. The thermal power of the reactor was 5 milliwatts, and its effective electric power was 630 kilowatts. These were excellent figures. 
the complex practically did not need any resources for its operation. On one filling of nuclear fuel, the reactor could work up to five years. The tractors with high cross-country ability could deliver Premier 630D station to any place of the far north, even if the road crossed the tundra and swampy terrain. For chassis were needed to transport the mobile nuclear power plant. The basic blocks were carried by MAZ-7960 tractors and the automated control system of the reactor and the auxiliary power unit with two diesel generators were carried by KRAZ-255 heavy haulers. After arrival at the site the whole complex was installed permanently and connected to the control system and backup power plant. Disposal of Premier 630D As a result, the mobile AC worked for about a year. The operating time of the plant was 3,500 hours in various load modes. The nuclear fuel reserve made it possible to ensure operation for several more years. Pamir was planned to be put on the assembly line. The Soviet government hoped that small capacity nuclear power plants would be able to provide heat and electricity to about 33 settlements in the far north. However, these plans did not materialize. On April 26, 1986, there was a terrible accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. After that, the Pamir 630D complex was subjected to massive criticism. At first, all related tests were stopped, and then, by the decision of the USSR Council of Ministers in February 1988, all work with the mobile nuclear power plant was shut down altogether. The main reason for the closure was as follows insufficient scientific validity of the choice of coolant. Both copies of the mobile NPP were decommissioned and scrapped. Dot. Both copies of the mobile NPP were taken out of service and cut up at the end of 1986. The tractors went for dismantling. The Premier 630D survived to this day in a small number of schemes, descriptions, and scale models, even by the standards of closed Soviet projects. Only two elements of the complex have survived the metallic structure of the reactor core turned into a fountain on the site of the institute developer. Part of the stainless pipes of the steam generator were turned into the decor of the reactor nightclub in Minsk, now closed. What could really make Pamir be written off? Digging deeper, the fate of the successful project remains a mystery, even at the height of the green hysteria, the military time and again brushed aside civilians, creating more dangerous things. The reason for completion also looks silly, to say the least, who, if not a branch institute, created this very science and its validity? Everything falls into place after a detailed acquaintance with the personality of the chief designer of Premier, Vasily Nesterenko. The fact is that it was the director of the Institute of Nuclear Power Engineering of the Academy of Sciences of the Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic, who was responsible for the entire nuclear power industry of the Republic of Belarus. And he was also the first public person who was concerned about the safety of people at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant during the accident, drawing attention to the fire in the reactor unit. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.